Welcome back to Holiness to the Lord, and this time we'll be covering the book of Deuteronomy. So I think this book is really interesting because Moses in this book is recounting everything that's happened in the first four books of the Old Testament. And he acts as a high priest and an officiate in bringing the children of Israel through the wilderness to the River Jordan. And that's the one thing between them and the Promised Land. He recounts with his authority all the history, miracles, covenants, and transgressions of the people to help them glean understanding and be able to proceed through to the other side in righteousness. This is very similar to those in modern temples who instruct you prior to helping you enter through the veil, although they themselves don't actually come with you, just like Moses. Anyway, food for thought in the retelling of the books and stories that have come before this. So in Deuteronomy 5, it's a recounting of the Lord speaking face to face to his children and teaching them his law and commandments. Again, you know, if, if you were to think of temples and the Lord communicating with you face to face. And anyway, it's just interesting. Um, in verses 32 to 33, it says that you will walk in the ways of the Lord and turn not to the side. This is very reminiscent of the tabernacle where there's a straight path through. And if you turn to either side, you get off the path and you are then not aimed back towards the Holy of Holies or the presence of the Lord. In chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, to keep God's commandments so closely associated with your own body, as well as things as common as door frames, was to have a constant reminder of your devotion to the covenants of God, much like temple garments are nowadays. In chapter 7, verses 6 through 9, the Lord loves those who will keep the oaths and covenants that he makes with them. He loves everyone and wants the best for everyone, but he especially wants those who will be his people and he will be their God. In chapter 18, verses 18 through 22, Moses is a shadow of Christ as seen in these verses, but it's also interesting to note similarities to Joseph Smith as well. Moses talked to God, built a tabernacle, the first kind of temple, and he brought forth new scripture and commandments. He led the saints, but dies before reaching the promised land. Anyway, just interesting parallels all around. In chapter 22, verses 10 through 11, this goes along with the counsel to Israel to not intermarry with those outside of the covenant, that plowing with an ox and a donkey is uneven. That, that seems pretty obvious, but it's specifically called out as something God has commanded one should not do. To be equally yoked with a spouse, one has to have the same foundational goals and morals, otherwise it will be bitter work for the both of them. In chapter 24, verse 16, this is very much a temple theme in my mind, especially with the backdrop of Israel invading the promised land and being commanded to wipe out certain groups who were there, and to restrain from other groups. We all are responsible for our own adherence to the covenants and commandments, but there are times when society goes so far off the rails, it's better to start anew so that sins accepted by society will not infect a new generation. In verses 21 through 24, there are so many references to when the children of Israel in captivity in Egypt, there's that constant reminder that it was the Lord who delivered and redeemed them. It's such a physical reminder of the fallen state of man and how we're all enslaved to sin, and the only way out of our own spiritual hi 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 ra is the atonement of Christ. In chapter 28, verse 58, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words in this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. This is very similar to the warnings found in temples, that the Lord has given us many great blessings if we obey, but if we fail to obey them, we will not be on the right hand of the Lord, but we will be in the power and turn towards the buffetings of Satan. In chapter 29, verse 1, Moses explains a covenant, promised blessings, and then destruction depending on their faithfulness. It's interesting and cool to see this covenant being a group thing, much like many of the tabernacle ordinances that were performed. And in verse chapter 32, verse 30 through 31, there are many references to Christ as a rock, like how Moses struck a rock and water came gushing out, living water specifically. Another often used reference to Christ is the foundation that we should build our lives on. This relates back to what will be the temple of Jerusalem. As a temple was built with lots of amazing stonework and needed to have a sure foundation to build on. Thus the foundation of Christ is what all other ordinances and salvations and salvation itself is built on. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the book of Deuteronomy. I'll see you next time.